that we think of the queen as the queen of colour. She just wears it so brilliantly. I think for someone of her age to remain as stylish and as current as she does is pretty incredible. I'm Amanda Foreman and I'm a historian. And I've spent the last couple of decades delving into the archives of the royal family. My name is Michelle Clapton and I'm a costume designer and I designed the first series of The Crown. My name's Miranda Almond. I am contributing fashion editor at Harper's Bazaar and a celebrity stylist. I would describe the Queen's style as, well, first, let's say, never compromising, always on point, she never gets it wrong. It's classic, it's chic, it is bold, it is colourful, sophisticated. She always makes sure that she stands out, but she's never overtly standing out. She's just on point at all time. The Queen's style has always been timeless. No matter what decade you look at her, it's always been slightly ahead of fashion, and yet at the same time, unplaceable. And that's what makes her so special. I think the Queen's style evolved over time. And I think part of her style came um, around through necessity. Before she became the Queen, I mean, she was, she was a style icon. I mean, she, People loved her. People followed her like, I guess, like a movie star, really. When she was a much younger woman, she wore clothes that accentuated her figure, and they were much more fashion conscious. But as she got older, she wore clothes that suited the figure of a more mature woman. And she had to find clothes that spoke to who she was as a mature woman, who was working hard and being a mother, a wife, and a queen. And so necessarily, her style changed. Hardy Amos, who took over, gave her a gentleness as well. And then I think later in life, it became almost like a uniform. I mean, with these beautiful colours that she knows that she needs to wear to sort of stand out and, and so everyone can always see her. So I think she's evolved in a very natural, in a very um, suitable way through her life. And I think that's something which is so epic about her really. She adapts to any situation, yet she always does it with dignity and with an eye for style, I guess. She came of age during the wartime years. For example, when she got married, she was uh, using the rations, um, which women were given in those days, for luxurious fabrics. And she had a collection of rations that she used to buy the Duchess silk that was used to make her dress um, by Norman Hartnell. And I think she reflected the mood of the nation at that time. It was dressing very sensibly, not too glamorous or too colorful. It was quite sort of pared back and um, subtle. And then during the 60s, she went through a more sort of pastel phase. There was a lot of sort of sugar almond pastel colors. And then during the 70s, it kind of grew into a sort of more neutral browns and greens. I think it was just really reflecting the mood of the nation. Then she sort of played around a lot with color and floral prints in the 80s. And little by little, the introduction of color as one of her signifiers, I think, just grew and grew and grew. And she just embraced color in such a beautiful way. And now I think that we think of the queen as the queen of color. She just wears it so brilliantly. The queen has to follow certain rules whenever she's wearing anything outside in public. And these rules are both practical and they're also symbolic. For practical purposes, the queen can't wear anything shiny or too light because it's going to fly in the wind and too many prints because that won't photograph well. But at the same time, she has to be very conscious of colors. When the queen wears a particularly bright color, it will often reference that occasion. It might be the country that she's visiting. It might be the time of year. So she'll wear pastels in the spring and summer. She'll wear darker colors in the winter. That's obvious. But at the same time, she's sending a message to women that you can be an older woman and stand out by wearing color. You don't have to be invisible simply because you're not young. I think the Queen uses colour. Initially, I think it's just a sensible thing that like people need to know where she is in a crowd of people. And I think that's why she always wears quite sort of interesting and quite often quite large hats, because again, you find her, you're drawn towards her. And often she's surrounded by men who tend to use dark colours. You see all these wonderful pictures of her, even in the sort of, I guess, 60s, where she's the only woman in this sea of men. And I think that's why initially, when she first came to power, she actually, I think she used a lot of blue, a lot of not such bright colours, but there was such uniformity to it. It was almost like a man's suit. And then I think, as I say, she got more comfortable. Then she started playing with this 
with a prettiness. One occasion that I remember was the Trooping of the Colour in 2016, and the men were all dressed in their sort of red military attire with the gold sashes and medals. And Kate and Camilla were in white uh, outfits, and the Queen wore this very, very vibrant green colour. It just stood out so well, and it was such a sort of lifting and encouraging and positive colour to wear. I think it just embraced the feeling of the nation at that time. There is something hugely comforting in the consistency of her wardrobe because I think in times of panic, especially in recent years, we look to the Queen for um, reason and stability and a sense of calm and a sense of duty and the sort of idea of just carrying on what, whatever's happening. So I think her look, her honed down look, for sure, absolutely gives us a sense of it's okay, everything's okay, the Queen's looking as the Queen should and uh, life can carry on. For the past 30 years, the Queen has worked very closely with her dresser and personal assistant, Angela Kelly. Everything is made particularly for the Queen and that's why it fits her so beautifully. And Angela Kelly knows the Queen so well. She understands what suits her colouring, what suits her movement, and there are certain things that only a dresser really gets. For example, when the Queen wears a hat, it has to sit at the right level so that when she's inside the car, people can still see her face. I think her wit comes through still in, in the hats and in her choice of jewellery, and I think she often sends very um, poignant messages. If she's on a tour, for instance, you know, the, the symbols of the country she's visiting. Sometimes you wonder if there is a, just a little hint of it in there if you look, read some of the motifs on her garments. One of the most interesting things about the Queen's clothes is how often they will contain the symbols, symbols of the moment. So, for example, in her coronation dress, it was embroidered with all the symbols of the United Kingdom, including the rose, the thistle, the leek, and this is what makes it so special and so unique. Any designer who designs a dress for the Queen for an important occasion has to be aware that she wants her dresses to speak to the nation. And so she likes to have, and sometimes it's required, if she goes abroad, she might wear a piece of jewellery that came from that particular country or was worn by a monarch who had been there before. And so she's referencing this long relationship that the Crown has had with not just the Commonwealth, but many other countries around the world. So many of the Queen's dresses were photographed in black and white, and it doesn't do them justice. But when you see them up close and you can see the embroidery, the trimming, the way that it was sewn together, it's absolutely breathtaking. Every dress has been a work of art. And also the fabrics that are used to, to make the Queen's outfits. Um, I think, I believe there's a, a dressing floor at Buckingham Palace where there's a huge archive of all the fabrics that have been used um, to make her outfits over the years. The fabrics are tested and researched um, and especially for their creasability, I hear, because if an outfit's going to crease when you're sitting down, it's no good. So um, I think that they meticulously research these fabrics, go back to them and repurpose them and refashion them into new outfits. I mean, the research we do in costumes um, for big productions like The Crown, that's pretty epic. I mean, we usually have a research team that helps us out on set. I research the per person, their upbringing, their parents. Try and get a really big picture um, because I think that all feeds into how that person expresses themselves later on. And obviously there were such major events with the Queen that you need to have a, an understanding of why she might react certain ways. I mean, there was a dedication to her. I think she was very similar to her father, there was, a, there was a sense of service and focus to her that I think Margaret didn't have, yet they were both brought up in the same way by the same mother who dressed them identically. I just think you have to look at such a wide area. And then also look at what's happening in the world. The worst thing you can ever do in costume is dress everyone exactly in the period. You must always look back. I think it's important to research that. And if you look at the Queen's mother, I mean, she dresses from a much earlier period because she thinks that suits her and because that's how she was looked when she was younger. And I think you find that with a lot of people. When styling Olivia for the press tour when she was um, doing season three and four of The Crown, 
We didn't really talk about um, emulating what the Queen wears or, or what she had to wear for the filming of The Crown. Yeah, you know, the, the part was played by Olivia so well and I think we just wanted to celebrate Olivia for her performance and not um, try and emulate her as the Queen. I think Olivia was the perfect choice to play the Queen because she is consistently great in every role that she plays, as is the Queen consistently great in the role that she plays. Um, also, they embrace colour. Olivia can also wear many colours, um, just like the Queen. I don't think there's one colour that doesn't work on the Queen. Also, with Olivia too, there are, she likes classic things and so does the Queen. So in terms of fashion choice, there is a similarity there. And uh, I guess the dark hair? <laughs> so how does someone become a royal expert? Well, in my case, I'm a historian and there's no shortcut to getting to really know the history of a family by reading their letters and their documents. And I've spent the last couple of decades delving into the archives of the royal family. So that's how I have got to know them historically. And then in 2019, I opened up Buckingham Palace for the summer opening and working with the Royal Collection for the three years that it took to mount this incredible exhibition about Queen Victoria and how she created Buckingham Palace, I got to know the ins and outs and what goes on behind the scenes. What I discovered while I was creating my exhibition for Buckingham Palace was that when Queen Victoria moved in, when she was so young, only aged 18, she discovered that there was only one really good working bathroom in the entire palace. It was a shocking thing, and it was one of the reasons why she herself had to do this complete refurbishment of Buckingham Palace. One of the things that visitors don't know is that there is actually a secret doorway in the white drawing room, and it's disguised so that you can't see it, but it enables the queen to pass in and out from her private apartments into the public apartments and suddenly just appear in front of visitors. With, with the crown in general and with the costumes as part of that generality is that we wanted a sense of the reality and like a really well-rounded character and to explore the character more and not just, I mean, I guess we all think we know the queen and I think it was just to try and get a little deeper into that and ask, why? Why is she like this? What happened? I loved doing it because it was this absolute beauty and then there was this absolute devastation as well. It's a drama. I mean, we were giving our version of it, whether it were true or not, it was just to give depth and, and to the person who we think of as the Queen. I think in film, um, costume can often tell you a lot about a character that that doesn't need to be said. And also working with the actor who's playing this non-fictional person, they have to find them and they have to feel secure in who they are and that they are portraying. It's not that they're mimicking them, but it's their version of them. And I think we work really closely with the actor or actress doing it to give them the essence of the person. I mean, we were lucky in Claire Foy because she actually looked quite like the young queen and her proportions were very similar. It's almost like a subplot. You can try and, if someone is really upset about it or something has happened, you can actually tell that through how they're disheveled or how they're dressing, or whether there's a precision or what they're trying to say, that actually enables it not to, have to be expressed too verbally. Um, and so I think that's, that's when costume can be really, really clever. I think people find the royal style so fascinating because they are such a different uh, set of people to us. They're not your everyday person. They're queens, they're princesses, they're princes. Um, they have a very different life to us and lifestyle. They get to go to so many glamorous parties. They host so many uh, heads of state dinners. There are so many royal walkabouts. Um, it's a great opportunity to dress up, to make an effort. Um, if you're taking an audience with a royal, for sure you're going to make the most amount of effort that you've probably ever made. Because they're important. They're important figures in our lives and I think what they wear is um, something that we, we, look, we look towards. Aside from the Queen, there are two women in particular who have used fashion in order to both promote a secure image of the monarchy, but also an image of women today, and that is the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla, and the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate. Uh, they both belong to very different generations, and so they have modelled their fashion according to both their age group 
and the image that they want to promote. With Princess Kate, she's been able to promote British fashion, British designers, while at the same time not being a clothes horse and not simply living for fashion, her clothes speak for what she does. It's always comfortable, it's always elegant, and it always promotes this idea of glamour attached to a working royal. The way Camilla has been able to differentiate herself from the Queen is by adopting a style that is slightly more cosmopolitan. So whereas the Queen has a global style that would translate in any country incredibly well, Camilla has adopted a kind of style that is particularly London orientated and you can see that in the way her clothes are shaped for her particular shape, it's slightly softer, it's very feminine and the colours that she wears which are deliberately muted, you never see the Duchess of Cornwall wearing hard colours, hard pinks, hard greens, hard blues, they're much more pastel-y which of course to the fact that she is uh, not going to be a ruling monarch, she's always going to be a queen consort and that means that she will necessarily take one step back. And then we can look at people like Princess Margaret, the Queen's sister, who is much more outrageous and much more, almost seemed to enjoy costumes more, clothes more. She didn't have the seriousness um, that the Queen has and the head of state, whatever, so she was allowed to play more. And I think the Queen uses quite strong primary colours that are often uncomplicated and, and often one colour throughout. And I think I, with Margaret, because she was more complicated, it tended to use, try and use more sophisticated colours, colours that needed more thought. There was this wonderful story I read when we were doing our research that the Queen took probably one fitting per costume, put it on and said, that's fine, let's go. And Margaret had two or three and would walk them along the corridors to see how they fitted. And so I think that really summed it up. She had more time, she had more passion for fashion. And I mean, yeah, maybe that goes through throughout the royal family really. Maybe people who have less, I guess are less high in the hierarchy have more chance to express themselves, maybe in a more personal way. I think that there are some similarities between the Queen and especially Kate, um, because I think Kate too is very sensitive uh, in the way she dresses for the appropriate occasion. Kate and the Queen share that sensibility of, of not sort of engaging in excess they share that sense of an occasion and rising to the occasion um, at all times. Also really never getting it wrong. I mean, it's quite amazing the career she's had and in terms of her fashion choices to have never got it wrong in all those years. Fashion does have a reputation for being frivolous, but like it or not, what you wear really does matter. I mean, the way that you present yourself to the world is the way the world is gonna react back to you. So I think for our sense of self, it's, uh, it's, it's hugely important. And also you can have so much fun with fashion and also use it as a tool. I think, you know, clothes can really change and lift our mood um, according to, to what we're feeling. And, and also I think, you know, sometimes uh, like the queen, well, I think she's the master of wearing the, the color yellow and this just spreads happiness and joy wherever she's wearing it, I think. And, you know, sometimes to think outside of yourself, the way that you dress and present yourself to the world, you might be lifting someone else's day. So also think about it as giving something back. I think what we wear matters is because it's our way of expressing ourselves. If we want to fit in or if we want to rebel or if we want to send messages to people. I mean, that's why we have, like, we have icons and we have strange groups of people who dress certain ways. I mean, for myself, I always wanted to look, I didn't ever want to look like anyone else because I thought then I would be compared. But other people actually really love looking like their friends and forming groups. So I guess it's, it's sometimes for a sense of security. It's sometimes just a sense of fun. And yeah, it's self-expression. In an ideal world, what women wear every day shouldn't matter so much. But we don't live in an ideal world, we live in the real world, and what women wear does matter. The Queen has taken the approach that she wants her clothes to both speak for her, but at the same time not speak instead of her. And so what she wears are clothes that enable her to be seen from you know, a mile away, but they don't wear her, she wears them. And so they are comfortable. The colours suit her colouring. They are timeless, 
They, they never have checks or busy colours or busy patterns. They're not too short, they're not too long. They enable her to step in and out of cars easily. Her heels aren't too high. And this way, she projects an image of strength. And that really is the image of the monarchy, a woman who is strong and knows who she is. I think the Queen's style will be remembered forever. Her legacy will live on. She just has such a classic sense of style and I think it's just so consistently um, getting it right and uh, consistently wearing things that suit her too. I think she's really uh, grown into the, the look that she has now um, and she looks like she enjoys uh, fashion and she enjoys embracing those colors and having a little bit of fun with it. I think as a as a overall look, I think she'll just be seen as this amazing woman, actually, who trod a fine line um, in her role as queen, but always sort of managed to, I don't know, have a sense of dignity, to have a sense of control, and do it sort of pretty effort effortlessly, and from this sort of young beauty who was a style icon right through until the woman we know now in her 90s and still you know there and being the focal point and 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 full of grace also you know for the for the older lady she's she's such a sort of style icon as well like you know why do you have to give up on your fashion choices as you get older queen clearly hasn't and i think that's really encouraging so i think the best style lesson that you can take from the queen is stick to what you know and what works for you and have a little bit of fun with it. What's so important about the Queen is that she is able to promote an idea of femininity and womanhood that is completely authentic and honest to being a woman. She hasn't had to try to wear extra makeup or wear sexy clothes or pretend that she's something other than what she is, which is a 94-year-old great-grandmother. And that is very empowering for all women to know that as they get older, they can dress comfortably, they can dress beautifully, they can wear colors, but above all, they can be themselves and be respected. <laughs>